toes to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. In 1983, a crack epidemic began hitting urban communities. The impact would be swift and last for decades. In the Hill District of Pittsburgh, there was an organization that wouldn't stand for it. Um, I grew up in the uh, Hill District. Um, as a kid, I played up in Addison, or it's known as Elmore Square. Uh, that's where Addison Terrace Learning Center originated. I um, got involved with Addison uh, probably in 1985 as a volunteer. Um, I liked uh, their mission statement. Uh, I liked the fact that they were working with the youth and trying to improve the youth's uh, condition in the community as well as the families. It would take dedication, commitment, and money to make a difference. I think my very first summer, I was in charge of what was known as the New Image Group, which is, is a uh, rites of passage group. At that time, um, we had no vehicles and I was running a summer camp. I had about 30 kids and we just went around to the various sites in the, uh, in the neighborhood and uh, 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 played in the local playgrounds and swam in the pools. We also, uh, one of the directors noticed that, you know, it's kind of impossible to do a, a, a summer camp without a van. And like the work that I was doing with them and I purchased two vans for the agency. Uh, that made us mobile at that time. And uh, prior to that, we were using our own cars, but not to transport kids, so, you know. Okay, my name is Luella Foster. After five years, I moved to um, Eloquipa Terrace, which is currently Oak Hill Community. And um, I was on the board of directors for tenant council for um, Eloquipa Terrace. And we met the board of directors um, for tenant council in Addison Terrace. And we got together, and they had got a grant from Pittsburgh Foundation, and they were um, hiring someone for respite care. Now, Addison Terrace um, community, um, the community attending council in Addison Terrace Learning Center, which is currently now Addison Behavioral Care Incorporated, they were soliciting for uh, two workers for respite care. Once I did respite care and the family seemed to have a lot of issues and I would try to help them iron out their issues and um, get on their feet, um, self-sufficiency program. And it's um, been very good. The community um, was very well organized and with the help of Addison Behavioral Care, things went very well in the community. Oftentimes, it takes organizations like Addison Behavioral Care to bring out the best in people, despite the adversity they face. I learned from what they did for me. It's like I, 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 they held my hand for me to let go, to hold on to somebody else's hand. So it's really, really cool that I know people um, that have helped me do that. Also, believe it or not, I had sent some of my patients to Addison to get help as far as drug addiction or um, needing to go into rehab or long-term or short-term, um, you know, NA meetings and things like that. So it was really cool that I had them to still kind of hold on to. See, that's the training you get from people, just knowing people in that field to where I'm at today. So it has helped me grow, grow. and to be a program manager for transitional housing for people with harmful, who still deal with drug issues and medical adherence and appointment adherence, um, kind of a, is a um, kind of like an attachment, you know, like an Addison behavior care, you know, caring for others. So that's pretty cool. Having adequate resources for smaller, community based organizations can hamper the agency's ability to succeed. There's less time, more and often burnout. Addison had some issues back in 2007 with the state. And once I came in and started asking questions, I realized that that was a concern. Um, we were on the verge of losing our license. So I started asking the right questions, putting some things in place 
so the Addisons didn't lose the license. Um, the first six months we did get a provisional, but now with the help of you know the consultants that we brought in and the staff of Addison, we were able to get a full license within one year with the new direction of the new director. Addison has regained its footing and prepared to shift with the needs of the community once again. Well, one of the things that I noticed with Addison was they were not visible in the community. Um, people knew where they were, but they didn't know what Addison was about. So now you can see the difference. Now Addison is, you know, well known around the community and people know. Even their attendance has gone up, um, they're in the schools, um, their, their record speaks for itself. Today, Addison sees over 800 people a year with a success rate averaging 75%. In 2010, Addison received a perfect score in its treatment facility. That means anyone coming to Addison for help with their drug and alcohol problems receive top-notch quality services. Drug and alcohol treatment also starts with prevention. They, in order to sway kids from hurdles such as teen pregnancy, drug abuse, criminal behaviors, and other barriers to success, Addison offers in-school services, out-of-school programs, mentoring, and training. This year, their summer camp focused on health and wellness. Um, I think we have a great mix of staff. We have, it's interesting because recently I did a training for the staff of intergenerational components of, the, of, of today. And our staff is ages 19 to 65. So when you have a mix like that, you have people who are current and trendy that can bring new and innovative and creative ideas along with people who are seasoned and experienced and with wisdom that can help bounce those ideas, how you can help bounce those ideas off of. So I think Edison remains current by being diverse in selecting our staff, paying attention to what happens in the community because we're community-based and, and true to our grassroots. We have our ear to the streets, so we know what's happening. Sometimes we know what's coming down the pike before uh, the broader community just because we see it on a more intimate level. So I think our, our population that we serve and the community that we're focused on helps keep us current with the work that we do. I think that it was preordained for me to be in this work because I remember early on in school being the go-to person for people and recognizing when people were uh, sort of struggling with things or stuff. I remember having a girl in my class in sixth, seventh grade eating glue and intervening at that point of saying, why are you eating glue and didn't you have breakfast this morning? And um, over the years I've seen her and she has been addicted. So um, as an adult, when you start to make the connections of your life and your purpose and the who's and the what's and the why's, that story came back to me in understanding early on the why it was important for me to be in this field. So when I think about how I became involved, I think it was just ordained that's where I was supposed to be. In addition, Addison counsels families in order for family units to stay intact. They offer community events such as quiz competitions, spelling bees, and every year a Kwanzaa celebration, which keeps to the heart of their culturally sensitive services. I don't think as a people we exist without family. No one is born unto themselves. Even if it's a, dis a disconnected family, every human being is born into a family. So the family is at the core of our existence. So if it's the core of our existence, it has to be the core of what we do day to day. So when I leave home, I have to think about my family. When I'm here, I have to think about the families that we serve and how we, how we provide resources and how we collaborate and, and have partnerships so people can continue to have strong families. Strong families is the base of this work, is the base of the community, and it's the base of the hope that I talked about earlier. So you see, Addison provides the community with many needed services. Although they don't have the big name recognition, they have big goals and big hearts. Uplifting the community is at the heart of Addison Behavioral Care as they continue to provide culturally sensitive services to individuals and families, helping them to focus on their quality of life, specializing in substance abuse prevention, intervention, and treatment. I would probably be, uh, probably be back out using if I wasn't uh, coming here uh, each week and uh, to find out more about myself.
if, if, two, if agencies like Addison cease to exist, uh, then we would go back to where we started. Throughout the country, once again, it's not just a regional issue, it's a national issue with drug and alcohol. So it's very important to have agencies like Addison that can assist people who have drug and alcohol problems. It's very important to have programs um, that Addison um, Behavioral Care provide to the communities. Uh, right now we have a number of programs, um, drug and alcohol. Um, we have youth programming um, on the road to success. Uh, there's a lot of programs here at Addison, but I don't feel there's enough. So community-based organizations like this, like Addison and some of the other ones we have around the city in Allegheny County are vital to keep our doors open so people can have a place to go where people look like them, understand what they're going through, or maybe have even been where they've been and can share that story.